about that 7.30. Let's call the meeting to order at 7.30. Roll call, please. Okay. Director Blake? Here. Director Marshall? Here. Director Slater-Carter? Present. Director Harvey? Here. Director Lummi? Here. We are all here. President's statement. Um, I see there are some comments coming on this. Um, there was a um, Mid Coast Community Council meeting last night, and it was requested that um, uh, by the council that Montera uh, Water and Sanitary and Granada Community Services District investigate um, having weekly compost pickup from kitchen waste. Um, as and, and under state law, you can't have your kitchen waste sit in your compost for two weeks because it's a public health hazard. So we would have to change some of our, our um, uh, practices. And also, it would be a change in cost. So we're going to be, us at Montero and Granada are going to be looking at this, and we will be getting back to folks um, about what the additional costs are. Um, Chris Porter has agreed that we should do a survey of all the folks who live in Montero and Granada to see if they're willing to pay the extra um, money every year. So we'll, we will work on that. Well, um, we just did a survey like that uh, a year and a half ago. And I'm not sure if that was mentioned, but it, it was mentioned, and the two people who moved here from San Francisco thought that wasn't soon enough. <laughs> uh, wasn't soon enough? It wasn't recent that. enough. It wasn't recent enough. Okay. So and do we have we did a call, and it was pretty clear, unfortunately. You can talk to Mr. Trump. Okay. Um, I thought we'd build a wall. The other, the other is that. Um, in looking at what Recology does in San Francisco, I think some people may have um, larger expectations about what can be recycled as food waste. Um, and so we, again, we need to look at what it means to all the folks who live here. Um, and uh, so that's that I had. Oh, the other was at um, Sam, the um, um, Stacy, the uh, I've forgotten her title. I call her the numbers guru because she helps with all the, does the finances and stuff. Anyway, she had an arranged for the board members to watch a movie called All the Queen's Horses which was a, and is a fascinating movie, I think it's on Netflix, um, in which a small town of about 15,000 people had um, a very trust-based relationship and with their controller and so on. And over 20 years, she stole $54 million. I highly recommend this uh, movie to everyone. It talks about the importance of segregation of financial duties, particularly in a public agency, and um, the importance of financial controls. And it's an amazing story that this woman over 20 years took e taking $54 million to fund her quarter horse operation. Um, it was, it's an excellent, it's an excellent documentary. So for, Everyone, it's it's easy to watch. Um, it's mostly dialogue, so you can listen to it while you're driving or something. But anyway, so moving right along to oral comments, and I see quite a few of them. Um, let me see, that's consent agenda. Homeowner insurance. Do we have? I'm sorry. Okay, and contract status. I'm, I'm just trying to see if that was an agenda item. It doesn't appear to have been. I didn't think there was. So, Harold. Yeah. 
great doors. <laughs> right there. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, my name is Harold Herman, and I'm a resident of Moss Beach. I'm here to share a couple of concerns with the Ontario Water Board. Um, some info about my background. So I work as an executive um, in an insurance division of a large corporation. We don't sell homeowner insurance products or fire insurance. We sell other products, but due to my work, so I'm familiar with risk rating and um, pricing of insurance products. So I want to quote here, uh, that's a Sacramento B, it's a recent article. Um, two consecutive uh, disastrous wildfire season have created an insurance crisis for thousands of Californians who live in and around fire prone areas. Spun, uh, stung by 24 billion in losses, insurers are imposing rate hikes, hikes or dumping customers altogether, leaving homeowners to seek replacement policies that can be two or three times as expensive. So this is something that's happening. So as I started to hear about it, and I started talking to neighbors, and sure thing, so there were entries on next door, um, neighbors also telling, yeah, once I had 25 years with the same company, they dumped me out in the market try to find insurance. So this is a huge problem. So um, cancellations, there was an article in the Mercury News, uh, 350,000 is the quote there. Uh, Californians got their insurance dumped by the insurers. Um, what's interesting is that the insurers or the carriers are not obliged to report that to the state insurance department. So the suspicion is that the number is actually a lot higher than what's reported here. Um, loss ratio, which is basically any dollar you take in as an insurer. Can, can you hear him? Can the can the folks at watching TV? Can uh, they? Will they be he, able to hear him? He just he's speaking into the microphone, so okay. as long as he does that, he's okay. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. So that loss ratio. Um, the different ratios our insurers look at it, but loss ratio in simple terms is what you take in premium and then what you pay for claims. So 2018, the loss ratio was um, 1.7 dollars. So they took one dollar in. 1.7 they paid out on average homeowner insurance. So that's not sustainable. And that's basically, um, when we look at the 15 largest insurers, um, most of them lost money in California. So at the same time, so when you're insurer, there's reinsurance. So they reinsure themselves. And there, these reinsurers, they don't like what they see, of course. So they are putting pressure on them, which in, in reflection then basically puts our state farms, AIGs, etc., to pull back out of these fire-prone areas with high fire risk. So that's that's a huge thing. So my insurance firms, I have Travelers. Um, if I look at the numbers last year, they have three percent market share. They have a 222 percent loss ratio. For one dollar in, two dollars twenty-two out for claims. So I'm waiting for the latter. So I'm up for a renewal in a couple of months, and I'm not sure what they're going to do. Um, so this is what's happening. The, all the insurers are looking at the book of business. And you, when you basically get asked, when you get insurance, you know, they check how close you are to the fire station, clearance around the house, or there are certain measures. But from a risk rating perspective from an insurer, it's a lot more complex. They look at a lot more things than what you see as a customer. So the triggers, you know, I said the white fires. Now, if we transfer that to our coast side, uh, we have the 2018 fire threat map from the California Public Utilities Commission, and that shows us most of the coast, mid coast, either in or surrounded by extreme or elevated fire, wildfire threat area, especially Moss Beach, Montero, extreme fire danger. So the insurers don't like that. Um, now, uh, a couple of months ago, there was a study published by Street Data streetlight data, actually, about evacuation routes. And I don't know if you've seen it, actually, yesterday in the printed version of the Half Moon Bay Review, they're uh, writing also about it. But this came out a couple of months ago. So the coast side made the list of towns that will be difficult to evacuate. And that's not a surprise. But what's new now is, so this is out in the public domain. Everybody's looking at this. Um, a bunch of cities here on the coast side, they are listed. Um, the mass is interesting because I would say almost 100% of the people who live here, we depend on Highway 1, and that's not necessarily what they reflect in number, but the fact is we are listed in there. Um, which brings me to the point that when I look at fire risk, evacuation, and then, of course, water 
and fire go together. And I started looking at uh, Montero water. Basically, what I read is 250,000 gallons in reserve for fire fighting. That's a reserve we hold. That translates to two hours times 2,000 gallons per minute. So that's what we have right now. But sounds like a good number. I'm not an expert. But what makes me nervous then when I look at the neighboring district, so CCWD, and there was an article which I read where it was stated 4 million in water reserves dedicated to firefighting. Now I understand it's not an apple to apple comparison, a lot bigger. I think we have six, seven thousand people here. They have 20 plus thousand. We are like a third, maybe a quarter of the size. But that doesn't explain the number why we have less than one sixteenth of water reserve in our tank to fight fires. And now we add extreme fire danger, so we have, I think, a lot of areas in the, in the canyons are tinder boxes. Though that makes me question, then again, if I put my insurance hat on, what does that mean? Yeah, and if you can't evacuate, and we still, you know, with the, with the data from streetlight data, uh, the pictures, you know, place uh, the, uh, what was the name of the town? Um, I'm blanking here right now. Paradise. Paradise City, yes, where people couldn't get in and out. One route in, through and out. Sounds very familiar. And people burned in their cars. So the question is for me, as we are adding new large developments to our system, are there plans to basically up the water reserve? I mean, you as a water board, you can't change the, the fire risk rating. You can't change what the insurance are doing. You can't change our evacuation route, but the question is, as we're adding new commercial large home uh, housing developments, is, is there a plan to address, it seems like, our little water reserve, especially when we look at our neighbor district with 4 million and we have 240,000 gal gallons in water. So um, for me, this is all about safety. Um, there's an element where we say, we want to keep or maintain affordable homeowner insurance policy. So basically, keep insurers interested in selling policies on the coast side, and but also then have adequate planning for a water system and, and water reserve to fight fires. So that's something you know, I'm looking at the board to consider and plan for. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I I want to give a quick response. A Cal Fire. Um, uh, a fireman came out, actually two of them, to inspect my area. And um, so I had this very same conversation with them. And I would be happy to have Cal Fire come to the district and have a discussion from their point of view. Essentially, they said that that particular study was based, yes, on the transit. It didn't look at the fact that we have the Pacific Ocean right here. Um, Paradise was surrounded by, by high fire entirely, and, and we are not in that situation. Um, and to your point about our water storage, when we became, when we took over the water district in 2003, we had many hydrants who had no pressure under the uh, private investor-owned utility. And we now have a uh, fire protection system that meets the uh, requirements. Of, of what we need to do. So there, there was a big fire, uh, not big, but there was a fire up um, Daffodil Canyon a couple of years ago. And what CAL FIRE did was they brought in their um, um, tanker airplanes. Yeah. And, and we have 116. And they, what they have in the neighborhood. That's right. That's but we are also much smaller, smaller in size and more compact, and so I will I will be happy to have um, Cal Fire come and discuss it. Um, it's been a concern of mine. Uh, I it's spoke to the Board of Supervisors, sure. so we'll put it on the agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want staff to address our number? Yeah, Please. Uh, I'm assuming you're talking about the storage number. Yeah. So. Um, I'm not sure if this is really an apples to apples comparison. I'm happy to look into the 4 million gallon storage on Coastal County Water District. But ultimately, our overall storage is uh, 1.4 million. million gallons that is available for fighting fires. Um, the uh, number, the 240,000, 
is, is a paper number that is calculated that is exclusively available for fire fighting. Um, yet, you know, our tanks are kept full at all times and that water is um, turned over due to consumption, but it's available to fight fires. So I want to learn a little bit more about what this 4 million storage number is in CCWD, but it sounds like that makes sense that it's an overall storage number. Um, that compares to our you know, 1.4 million gallons of storage. Good. Thank you. And moving right along, um, sorry, Sid Young. I believe my speaker slip has my legal name, Carlisle Ann Young, Moss Beach. Yes. Um, quickly on the point that Herman brought, brought up, and that is water for fire <coughs> suppression. Um, somebody mentioned that we're surrounded by the Pacific Ocean on one side and not all forest and everything. Does, does anyone here know if CAL FIRE has um, the capability to extract seawater for fire suppression in case of a conflagration such as Paradise? When we put it on the agenda, you can we ask them. Oh, I might, might not be <laughs> home, but okay. Um, so the reason I'm here on public comment is I was also at the MCC meeting and it, it seems like they did a very unscientific thing and they used a little uh, next door poll to see who would be in favor of food waste um, collection and that makes us have to then our district vote to have a weekly pickup instead of bi-weekly, I mean uh, bi-monthly for um, green waste. And uh, one of the MCC members wasn't even sure the difference of green waste and food waste but, um, you know, one is garbage, basically, and the other is yard waste. However, um, you can't go for two weeks because of rodents and everything else and possible smells. Um, my thought is, and the reason I wanted to make a public comment here is because I don't want to see our rates go up again. And um, the Office of Sustainability from San Mateo County has um, free, comp well not free, discounted um, worm bins for indoor composting and um, yard bins for outdoor composting. And I, why, you know, haul away your um, debris, either garbage or yard waste, <coughs> when you could return all those nutrients to the soil in your yard. Now, they brought up the fact, there were two guys here, there, that moved here from San Francisco, where a lot of people don't even have yards, they live in apartments, but um, San Francisco enacted this very large um, program years ago. In fact, they used my office in the city every night to make phone banking calls after all the agents had gone home. But um, they were very successful in getting um, a lot of reduction from the landfill. But food waste from this tiny district is minimal as far as reducing landfill. Um, but I would encourage MWSD before they you know, take on more fees for us to pay in our garbage collection is to um, get the Office of Sustainability over here with some master composters to give some um, <coughs> classes or lessons, free demonstrations, and maybe even offer some of those um, worm bins and yard composting bins as, you know, a lot of people didn't know they existed. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Chris Thola? So I have a, a letter I'd like to read you, and I'd like to have the letter and the attachment uh, put into the minutes. Is that acceptable? Of course. On September 5th, I received from your general manager a denial of my public records request uh, dated August 9th, 2019 for information regarding your actions and communications regarding the Caltan Caltrans bypass property <coughs> in Montera and Moss Beach. My request was filed in response to calls I received last month from residents alarmed at the district laying out four well lease locations on the property. This action was taken by MWSD without prior explanation to constituents or adjoining property owners and without permission from Caltrans as the owner. 
The district has been engaged for over four years in attempting to acquire the bypass property and or its water resources without conforming to the legal land use planning requirements of the San Mateo County Local Coastal Program. MWSD has been informed by Caltrans, the Coastal Commission, and San Mateo County Planning of the LCP requirement for approval of a specific plan prior to any use of the property other than open space. Yet the recent activity, staking out four well lease sites, indicate that the district's efforts to circumvent the LCP legal requirement for a specific plan continues. One of the district's stated purposes in pursuing the bypass property is to provide stewardship of the watershed. I agree with the need to provide stewardship, but I vehemently disagree with the approach that MWSD is pursuing by conducting all discussion regarding the property in closed session and denying constituents relevant information, the district has concealed its plan and intentions for the bypass property. The specific plan process mandated by the San Mateo County LCP is intended to be transparent and open to the public. In the spirit of encouraging such open process and public dialogue, attached is my draft plan for unification of the Coastside Special Districts, a proposal that provides appropriate protections for the bypass property and its resources. I will be circulating this document to the Special Districts, Half Moon Bay, Coastal Commission, Caltrans, San Mateo County Planning, and LAFCO as an alternative to be considered. I encourage the board to conduct a public agenda item to disclose and review the MWSD plan for the property and to consider alternatives such as the unification plan I have provided. I also urge you to reconsider your position of withholding information concerning your actions with respect to the Caltrans bypass property, given that the information concerns public property and work performed with funds provided by your constituents. Continuing to withhold this information reflects poorly on MWSD as an entity operating in the public interest. Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, Good night. Can, can Christine make a quick comment on her? I would very much yes. appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, President yeah. Slater Carter. Um, uh, uh, working with um, the district's manager, uh, we responded to Mr. Fullock's public records act request indicating that we will comply. Why don't, why don't you talk to the camera because those are the, and they will be able to hear you better or at least the microphone. Sure. So we uh, responded uh, under the Public Records Act to Mr. Fullock's uh, request for records to Keeley. Yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. So that, that was a misstatement. <laughs> we absolutely indicated that we would produce all disclosable records that aren't exempt from public disclosure. Uh, we responded with two letters and uh, asked Mr. Tholog to let us know uh, when he would come pick up the records because they're ready for release. So I don't think we've heard from him. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. We have the records so that, that available. Well, that was not in the letter that he received. What was not in the letter? Uh, excuse the me. This is, this is, um, are you yes. Robert? I am. If you'd like to come up, because sure. you do have a speaker slip, I'm but this sorry. is this is not a, a, not for debate. And by the way, I love your photos. Thank you. <laughs> I, uh, and I'm sorry I interrupted you, ma'am. That's okay. I just wanted to assure the board that we've complied with the Public Records Act. Thank you, Robert. I was privy to those letters. That was nowhere in those letters that that you had the records and they were available to pick up. Yes. Uh, states, well, states very specifically. Yes. That they the will. records are available for pickup September. after September 10th. All right. Um, I rise in support of uh, Chris's proposal to consolidate the water and waste systems on uh, the coast side, which was part of his proposal he did not read. I'm one of the people, one of the lucky people who live adjacent to the 
uh, easement on Drake Street. Uh, I have been there, lived in Montero for over 30 years. I have a landscaping easement from Caltrans uh, for a line of sight barrier for headlights there, so I've been working with Caltrans for a couple of decades now. My concern is very simple, and it ties to this gentleman's <coughs> concerns about the insurance and the water and the rest, and that is that no one is taking care of that property. I have spent untold hours trying to, and I've been cited by CAL FIRE for not clearing the property in front of my house that does not belong to me. So Caltrans refuses to take care of it. PG&E refuses to trim around the wires. And now I'm finding within 100 feet of my home these lease sites, which based on my conversations with Caltrans, are not in fact in existence. There are no lease sites. As far as the Caltrans representative with whom I have spoken and worked with on my property all these years. So um, my concern is that I would like to see a plan. I'm not a lawyer, I'm an artist. Would like to see a plan that can be discussed. If you plan on using that aquifer for uh, the network, some of that money needs to go into managing that property. Right now, I spend my spare time out there with a chainsaw trying to cut dead plants away from my home. I, and I, too, don't know what's going to happen when my insurance comes up for renewal. My concern is this valuable asset, and I've spent my life in land conservation. I've done, I've, uh, on the advisory of board of Semper Virens, I did all the photography for the Peninsula Open Space Trust for over 30 years. So I know a little bit about how these things go. Everybody wants the goods, nobody wants to pay the bill. So all I'm asking is that there's a public conversation. If you intend to make, uh, uh, take uh, benefit from the assets of that property, that a certain amount of stewardship is considered along with it, so that those of us uh, and I'm, again, I'm on a well, so I'm not one of your, your rate payers, uh, but so that we don't have that burden fall on ourselves. So that's, that's the reason I wanted to support Chris's uh, efforts in this regard and getting the, the story out to those of us who uh, might have something to say about it. So Thank you. Thank you very much. I will Thank say you. that I've lived in Montero a month or two longer than you have. Mm -hmm. um, but I have always been concerned about the fire hazard of that. And one of the reasons I ran for this board a while back and have been w trying to get this board and, and now have a board that I can work with to have us take that. And, and we were advised by our attorney to talk about just well sites I have frankly wanted to take the entire span, and it sounds like you would encourage us to do that. I would like to see it, and, and again, we're working on, on the documentation. I'd like to sit for wildlife preserve trails, mm -hmm. um, open space, and for community use with fire protection. And um, so that's, um, but we have to conform with the Caltrans requirements. Of course, I understand. First, that. and Chris can Chris can speak to that. Yeah, uh, right. I was asking for Christine to comment earlier, the fact that we're not doing this as a subterfuge to the community. There are certain things that we're attempting to do that aren't public yet, and we have certain things happening in closed <coughs> session that we just can't open up everything to the public at this point. May I just say that if I were to uh -huh. yield on the, mm -hmm. the easement that I have from Caltrans by one foot, mm -hmm. they would be all over me. The idea mm -hmm. that you're placing well sites, claiming them as leases on the signage, mm -hmm. and they know nothing about it. See, here's my concern. I, I know you've been here a long time. My, I, I, my I think you, I think you've best friends. Christine could if comment. Chris could comment, I think comment, I think she could help you. The, first of all, Caltrans is huge, and so maybe the ones you were talking to weren't talking to no, the ones we've been talking to. And Chris, if you could talk about the process that we have been following. 
Yes, um, actually, and you, you do correctly refer to there is a public process, obviously, that, that the board needs to follow, but they're just not at that point. And um, conducting feasibility is uh, actually what the board is considering at this time, and they're it, again, yes, they put a test well said, right out in front of well, our house, and it was very successful. Well. I, don't, I don't know what lease sites, I don't know what that reference means, lease sites. I can provide photographs of the four no, of no, them. No, no, I, I know, but you're, ref, you're, you're uh, putting a, a title on that. I don't, I don't know. It was know a what title that, that was printed on all yeah. of the posts well, that were put that in. That obviously was surveyors. Uh, it was your staff, yeah. people in Montero water and sewer district trucks that put the uh, so sites I don't, in. I don't think that's the case. But okay, so Clemens, Clemens can, can clear it up. That. Thank you, Robert, for yeah. being here and um, sure. speaking to us, first of all. Sure. Um, so uh, uh, what I want to assure you is that we have permission from Caltrans to enter the property. We have a permit with Caltrans to enter the property and um, to ultimately also for, for water exploration. It doesn't mean that we can take the water at this time. Right. We are allowed to enter the property and we're allowed to drill. And you're aware that we did that some years back. Yes, the test well on Drake and, and up the hill and so on. Yes, yes they're unfortunately not test wells. They're boreholes, which means we have to backfill them. <coughs> There's no remnants left. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that's a very important point to get across, that we do have permission to enter the property. The, yep. the people and, that manage the property just there. are not aware of it, I, I guess. I, I, have to, I have to say, you know, it, it, the, the work done was done by our staff, it was an outside consultant. I'm assuming... Hydrology, yes. I'm assuming they took some template form of whatever to post something out there. That was not run by us. I'm not aware of any lease site declaration on site. Uh, if that's the case, I have to take a look at it and I have to make sure that this goes, uh, that, this, that we remove this. Is the sign still up? There's, there's, they're, 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 on, they're labeled posts. Each one has a, qu a, a, a square saying, well, lease site okay. so A, that, that B, is, C, that and is B. A, I understand where the miscommunication, the misunderstanding comes from yes. due to this sign. Uh, that, that, is, that is not authorized by us in any way. Um, but ensuring you we have permission to enter. Thank you. Is that document public? It is. Okay. And I can send it to you. Oh, as, thank you. I appreciate that. I, can. I also want to suggest an uh, off-the-record um, conversation um, with the district with me. Sure, I'd be happy to do that. Off, class. off camera, not necessarily mm -hmm. off the record. Understood. Yeah, I understand. Yes. I understand. Not right. If I could Thank just, you, Scott. Yes, sir. Uh, we've actually discussed it in open public meetings. Uh, the last one that I can think of to be sure of is when we had our last community meeting in Moss Beach, and we packed the house and we talked about all sorts of things. And this is one of the topics. And I think uh, many of us have been talking about the the utility that this has now for the community and how much more utility it could have if it had someone who cared about it and took care of it. Agreed. And uh, I have talked, as have others, with uh, individuals at the county who are in positions of responsibility and uh, have been told in no uncertain terms that County Parks does not want this land. And they actually, this, this was extremely public, in a 5-0 vote, I was there on the day that they did it on it was a Tuesday, and we were there. Uh, they passed a resolution. The, the, board, of the board of supervisors passed a resolution unanimously, requesting that Caltrans donate the property to Montero for the benefit of. The I'm community. aware. Of, I'm aware of that. Well, yes. In those discussions, all of that discussion, uh, foundational to that was that we would care for the property like it has never been cared for before. That was a long time ago, the plans for public gardens in the original, in these drawings. Yes. So this is this is something that... But there is no plan, right? Well, I, 
How much money do you want us to spend on making a plan for it before we're sure that? that My understanding is that a plan is required a to plan move is required forward. Required for certain steps, but people might have you believe that a lot of things have to be done before you can do any investigation, mm -hmm. and that is incorrect. Mm -hmm. And that information that you're being told may be in pursuit of some other goal, but our goal is to take care of the water needs of this community. That is, that's our charter. Mm -hmm. And in so doing, if we can take care of watershed and provide water for our community for the long term, if we can build on that and take good care of that property, make good trails, Don Horsley insisted every time we met, if you're gonna do that, you gotta put in a bathroom. It's like, <laughs> well, nobody's needed a bathroom on that in, a, you know, in all the years where people have been well, using for trails. Well, let rephrase that. Well, well. <laughs> but we, in talking with them, said, you know what, we'll find a way to do that if we're able to come all the way through this stuff. None of this is a secret. The, the machinations of dealing with Caltrans in the county and others on the regulatory front, and on the property, real estate stuff, all that stuff has to be done behind closed doors, and that is right and proper under California state law. And there's a reason that if, that if you do some of that stuff out in the public, the public winds up paying far more than it should than if you do the, those kind of negotiations in private, okay? But I'm sitting here today telling you that we have been talking about this for a long time in the public. We have been talking consistently with our, our, our uh, uh, public official partners in various places, uh, when we've been over to Caltrans, when we've been over to San Mateo County, when we've met here and in the community, it's always been about what our community needs, and that always has been a good caretaker for that property. We've had a lot of discussions about fire danger and ways that that property is being uh, improperly cared for by the current property owner, mm -hmm. and uh, we are in a pretty decent position to do something to improve that, but we gotta get through a whole bunch of things to even demonstrate feasibility before we can get to that point. But I don't think we're gonna be shy about talking about what we'd like to do. But okay. getting, getting those mechanics done, that we've got to work through here. We'll stop this. Uh, I just wanna just want to make one, one quick comment. Sure. Robert, uh, the, the, those uh, sites uh, uh, will, will, will not necessarily be the exact sites mm -hmm. uh, in the in the process for the test wells. So if those aren't going to be the sites for sure. It's just a part of the process to, to make a mark. But the, but you know it's close to your house. They may not be the exact sites. Yeah, and it's not close to my house. It's in in the neighborhood. The test well that was drilled on Drake Street that was very productive. Uh, is probably a hundred feet in front of my front door. Mm -hmm. The new sites are down the hill, up the hill. Okay. My concern, I've been coming, my best friend, his father owned Ocean View Farms in the 1960s. So I've been coming here for a long time from when it was truly a cow town, okay? Mm -hmm. It is no longer a cow town. It's a major setter here on the coast. And I just am trying to make a respectful request that process be followed, mm -hmm. and that uh, that those of us that live next to this, especially those of us on wells, have a voice in in how it's going. And I appreciate you uh, taking the time to hear me out. Thank you for coming. Thank, you for, Thank coming. you for coming. And our cards for every single board member are out there. Yes. Please don't hesitate to give us any of us a call, um, and we'd be happy. We'd be happy to. Um, just discuss this with you but thank it, you I it appreciate has been it has been a goal of mine for 25 30 years mm -hmm. and um a, a goal of everyone on this board but it's just the steps we have to go through you'd find very little resistance in our community if we had some notion that stewardship was leading the way stewardship and right now things show up you know yeah. in the case of my neighbors right outside their front door yeah, no. Stewardship so. is lead and has been leading the way. The other problem is, as a small district, we have been um, uh, totally absorbed with the lawsuit, the bad faith lawsuit that Half Moon Bay filed against us. Yes. And um, taking care of this district is our first obligation. 
and um, but I see, I see that land as our forever water supply. We don't want to become beholden to Hetch Hetchy. Yeah, and, and stewardship's got to be at the very foundation of that. And if you look at what we've done with um, like the, the property that we took when we bought the water system the, up above Alta Vista and what we've done with that property, we've improved the trails and made it easier for people to get up onto the mountain. Um, and when the Coastal Commission said we had to do that, we're like, yeah, <laughs> okay, that's not a problem at all. We live here. Um, and it's, uh, throw me in that part. <coughs> we, we took a broken down water system and turned it into something that we're really proud of and that this community really counts on. And when everybody, all the other towns in California were having to do a lot to deal with the drought, we've done a lot of work to make sure that, that wasn't our problem. And, you know, we, we're very blessed, you know, it's no guarantees, but it's the, it reflects the kind of diligence uh, that our staff especially and our consultants have put into making sure that what we're doing is, is good and I would just point out I mean it, it seems maybe a little tangential but I'm gonna brag a little bit since we got a second but <laughs> when, when we did a, a sewer project in El Granada with the sewer authority mid coast side of which we're a part um, uh, there was an engineer who went about the job of making sure that what we did was as environmentally uh, non-impactful as possible as we increase our ability to hold uh, wet weather sewage, mm -hmm. which, you know, if you don't hold it, it spills, and that's just completely, you know, contrary to our, our uh, mission. So in doing that project, um, we were pretty well convinced that we could do that uh, very environmentally responsible, but our, our engineer got us a a negative declaration, not a mitigated negative declaration, but a negative declaration saying you're going to do a construction project and when you're done, there will be no negative impact. And it's now been in the ground and operational and protecting the coast side uh, for many years. And if you don't know it's there, you're gonna have a hard time finding it. <laughs> and this is the, we take we take joy in, in doing work like that. And this property back here is very special. It's right here at home and we want to do something really good with it if we can get to that point. And After 20 years of living next to it and seeing nothing but abuse by everybody, yeah. it's very hard for me to take cheer out of this. Well, so that's, far... That's why we need to own it. But let's yeah. let's yeah. move on. I invite you to stay. Thank you very and, much. And I invite you to stay because we're going to be having, I believe, more water discussions throughout the meeting. Thank you very much. My wife and I have been disabled from a 12-year battle with Lyme disease. We go to bed at 6 o'clock at night. Oh. So we're going to take our leave. We appreciate your courtesy and your time. Thank, thank you. you. And thank, thank you, you thank much. you so much. But like I say, take our take our cards and stay in touch and we'll be happy to as you can see, we'll be happy to talk and talk and talk. <laughs> thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Okay, moving moving right along. I, I need to say but I'd like to say one quick thing up there. Oh sure. On this subject. It didn't go past my uh, recognition of the first speaker on that topic. And I think he used to be a board member, and I, I detected sour grapes. And the fact that he was putting out that you guys nefariously were keeping this from the public, and even though the attorney said that we had offered the public records to him, he claimed we didn't. Um, he's in favor of consolidation. I would like to be on the record of being completely opposed to consolidating. <laughs> they want our water. They don't want us to develop water in the Caltrans right away. Thank you. Thank you, Sid. Okay, having gone through all of the public comment, let's move on to the, we have no public hearing, uh, consent agenda. And I have several requests. Um, Greg Diegas wants yeah. to speak to consent agenda and Carlisle Young, Carlisle Ann, has asked us to um, move item number 13 on the consent agenda, the big wave, to the um, new business to allow We can't do that. Business. That's what I'm here to do. Well, you go ahead. So, do you want to make a motion? I've got to take it let's, first. Let's have a motion and move this. If that's what you're going to be talking about, let's. I need a motion to so move it. So I can it. comment on it yeah. then. Oh, so then. You Thank you. Ahead. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Sorry. Motion by Rick, second by Scott. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So All right. might want to do the consent agenda first. Oh, let's the do the consent agenda. And does Big Wave qualify as old business or new business? Probably. 
I think it should be new business. Okay, we, why don't we make it uh, first item on new business? If lots of people are here for that, can we push it up to you? So I don't know. Is it a, is that a possibility? It's a possibility, but I don't think that the old business is going to take very long. Okay, that's fine. Just okay, do we have a motion on the consent agenda? Does anybody want to pull any items? I move for acceptance of the consent agenda. Second. Rick and Eric. Minus number 13. Minus 13. Minus 13. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Um, we will move right along to old business. Um, MWSD collections contract status update. And this is about um, sewer. Thank you, Catherine. It is about the um, collections contract that we have with the Sewer Authority Mid Coast side, um, who is essentially providing field staff and equipment to maintain our collection system, our sewer collection system. We've added this as a standing item um, to the second agenda uh, in the month. Um, so we're reporting on an ongoing basic about the contract assessment and negotiation. Um, since we have an audience today, I'm going to elaborate a little more. Um, so the, <laughs> we are still under an old contract. The city of Halfham Bay actually has a new contract. Colorado Community Services District has the same contract as we have. So we're under a uh, self-renewing contract that is uh, based on, um, I would say, an outdated scope of services. Uh, I see that as the major uh, issue with the contract. However, now we're in a situation where the city of Half Moon Bay is under a different contract with the Sewer Authority Mid Coast side. And unfortunately, this contract is looking at different billing methods. While our billing method is based on hours, um, the contract with the city is based on partially hours, but mainly linear feet per cleaning. And I think that's where uh, the major problem lies with this contract. So what we're doing, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get our collections contract updated. Um, I am very hopeful that um, we see some movement in a direction where we um, could actually have um, a situation again that we have for almost 40 years where all three agencies have similar contracts. That doesn't mean that the scope of services looks the same. So last time I wasn't able to prom, uh, uh, present any progress because there was some vacation time involved. This time um, both the SAM acting manager and myself met to discuss essentially how to proceed with this collections contract update. And the first step is right now, we prepared a draft scope of services for, this, for the sewer services that we would like to see from the Sewer Authority Mid Coast side. And um, that is now in Sam's hand, hands. And um, so we're, we're waiting to hear back from Sam on the su su suggested scope of services. In the meantime, we're also working with um, our legal counsel on a review of the existing documents. Um, we're, we're that, that was held up through Dave's uh, uh, illness right now, so I'm looking forward to working on, with Christine on that. Okay, so that's the report on the collection. Okay, I have contract. a comment, and maybe that's something we can bring up um, if this contract with Dan Child moves forward and he can perhaps have some suggestions as to how to resolve this too. That's Item number two, idea. review and possible action concerning the water rate study. Thank you, Kathy. Yes, said rates have to go up. Okay. Well, let's bring up my question during the big day. So we identified Actually, already two years ago, but I mean, for sure, this year's budget process. Um, we we understood that our uh, water <coughs> revenues 
aren't sufficient to cover the expenses. Um, for sure, they cover the O and M expenses, but the question is really how much money do we want to invest in our infrastructure? And um, we have some uh, clear guidelines that we look at on on, on how to assess this and, and what we need to spend, and we're currently far from it. So um, we know that there is a um, uh, that we need to collect more revenue on the water side, and the board authorized to initiate a water rate study. Uh, we actually went to the board with some ideas about this um, a month ago, and um, it was uh, so. So we oh, what we also did is we actually. Um, sent $500,000, which is a loan from the sewer side to the water side, so that we can breathe easily through this coming fiscal year. Um, the water rate study, again, we presented some ideas at the July 18 meeting, so it's already a little longer than a month ago. And uh, by now, um, the consultant and myself finalized a draft and we were actually recommending that this now go to the district's finance committee uh, so that we can get some guidance in advance of the next MWSD board meeting. So we hope to um, bring something to the board on the um, October 3, I believe it is, and would like to schedule a finance committee meeting um, maybe next week um, to get an early start. Maybe there's two uh, committee meetings required. Uh, we'll see. So we, we, we try to hone this down so that we have something that can be presented to this board in October. Okay. That meeting would have to be on Monday. Uh, okay. Because I am uh, leaving on Tuesday for a couple of weeks. Okay. Um, Eric, uh, you I'm ready? out Monday. You are out Monday. Yeah, I'm not here. So we can talk. We can just, just figure out a schedule. Okay. So we'll and I know I have a week. request from Greg. He wants to participate. Um, so we'll we'll I'll send out an email tomorrow, and we'll see that we get together as soon as possible and work through this. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. Thank new you. business. Uh, let's move item 13 from the consent agenda approval of the big wave subdivision to um, the new business. Okay. Thanks, Catherine. Um, yes. So I I have to say I'm uh, somewhat excited about this item up. It's been a very long time. We've been working with big wave over a decade now. And um, we've, 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 we've saw some prior board actions, uh, um, but, but never directly, like for example, uh, that this board made it clear that we would serve this project. Um, we did this seven years ago, I believe, um, essentially issue will serve letter for, for Big Wave. Uh, in the meantime, the Big Wave project was approved in 2015 at county level. Uh, the permit was then subsequently amended and that actually happened very recently in Ju July 23, I think it was, somewhere around that time. So um, there's a somewhat, somewhat revised uh, project that we're actually looking at. And uh, we have, in the meantime, worked with Big Wave to come up um, uh, to prepare a document that is the uh, MWC Big Wave Subdivision Agreement for Phase 1. So what this subdivision agreement does is it allows the extension of a water main along Airport Road from pretty much from Los Banos uh, all the way down to uh, the frontage of the Big Wave property. Um, for the on-site improvements, there is so there there would be some on-site improvements needed as well, meaning interior mains. I want to be clear that it's not covered in this agreement, so we have to amend this agreement or provide a second agreement to take this step. 
Um, what we're also not doing here right now is we're not issuing a water permit per se, meaning um, uh, so we're not issuing a meter of some sort. Uh, Big Wave has filed an application with us for um, the uh, uh, wellness center um, water meter that's currently under review and is processed to state as a staff. But what we're really talking about is this um, approval of simply a water mainline extension. What it does is it allows the um, filing of the subdivision map at the county level. So Cemetery County is um, a, a, a per, a permitted the uh, project in July. How or excuse me, the um, subdivision. However, the subdivision map hasn't been filed yet, and so there were a number of utilities that essentially had to be involved in this subdivision map. Uh, the recordation of the um, easements, for example, for the internal mains, etc. That's 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 all on the subdivision map. So we are um, very comfortable um, recommending to adopt the MWC board resolution and authorize the board president to sign the big wave subdivision agreement for phase one water main construction. I want to say that, I want to add to that, that I think this is all subject to um, legal counsel's approval. Final okay. draft. For the final, for, for the final, final draft. <clears throat> okay. So um, there, there are there are obviously some some numbers that need to be plugged in and um, exhibits. I have two and, speaker slips, so we're going to move to public comment and um, let's start with Greg Diegas and then followed by Carlisle Ann. I just wanted to say, and I know Jim Harvey's a big backer of this project, we had a special needs kid. He had OCD. He's no longer with us. So I have some sympathy for the, uh, for the project. That said, you will be aware, at least Clemens and Catherine received an email from me listing some problems. First, procedurally, there weren't any dollar figures in the draft that's attached to the agenda, so I don't know how you can vote on bonding something with a blank number. There are also, let's call it a half dozen typos and ambiguities that I pointed out that I suggest be addressed. I used to do some legal review stuff for a living. Um, so I think you have an incomplete package in front of you. Um, but there's also some substantive issues, and I understand I'm late to the game here, and that Clemens has graciously spent time trying to educate me. But I haven't seen the kind of analysis or due diligence that I would expect for a project of this magnitude. I mean, where are the financial projections that show the, you know, the cash outlays and exposure, you know, and the revenues coming in and the coverage and all that? Um, one thing relates to the rate study that may be coming up. If you're going to build this extension for millions of dollars, then we're going to have to operate it. And it's going to be, and I use the word, not an asset, but a burden on the district. Because when that thing finishes aging out of its useful life, everybody else is going to have to pay for that. See what I'm saying? They yes. pay for the first version of the asset, but we have to pay for it for the rest of the time. And just, I don't just, know where the analysis like is. Sam. And I don't know where the rest of the analysis is. Well, and Sam is another issue. I put into the email I sent you guys a half a dozen considerations, which take too long to explain here, but look at the stress on Sam. We're now going to be adding more sewage. We already have a problem with the Sam staff having to turn off the flow from the north and back up the sewage into the expansion tanks during wet weather events. So how much more wet weather expansion tank capacity do we need? Well, hopefully, And I don't know, and it's probably a bigger problem when you have an office park. Then who pays for that? We're not using your sewer. You are using. You're using El Granada, yeah. which is part of SAM, which is part of the Entertise system. Let's not have a back and forth just okay, one so, at a time, So, please. you know, I, I don't think we can sp spend the time up here debating the things I wrote, but I would be surprised 
if you voted in favor of this without considering all the issues that were raised, because we pay, if, even if El Granada can, can elect the sewer connection fee, we still pay for the infrastructure and our share of it. And then there's also issues having to do with the way the rate study is calculated. You know, it's based on a capital improvement plan, but it doesn't include a fully loaded evaluation of the asset portfolio. So I think the rates are going to be impacted. I don't know how. I haven't done the calculations. So I view it as kind of like this needs more analysis, at least financially. Maybe somebody's going to say, don't worry about the prices right now. But you know, I tend to worry about the money. When the businesses I used to be in, we would have done this before. All right, thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Carlisle and you. I have some questions for Clemens who left the room. Shall I go get him? Uh, no, let him come back, and he's not going to be gone long. Okay, I am, I am sure. Um, maybe, you, maybe the board has the answer. I'll ask it now if you want. Sure. sure. Um, as far as the big wave extension line, is that something they pay for before we start building it, or it's in anticipation of them breaking ground? Uh, Christine or Tanya? They pay as they. They're paying for the construction. We're putting it all on yeah, Tanya. Okay, and then um, as far as once the we start selling them the first drop of water, um, my understanding was when the residents voted to approve the bond to buy the uh, water district from um, citizens slash RWE, that um, or was it A W whoever Calam Calam thank you um, that you know we spent the money for that bond. And yes. now, um, every time a new connection gets added, they have to pay part of that back to the district. Is that my no, understanding? No, they, they, pay, they so pay into the bond. Well, the bond gets added they, to their they, tax bill. They, they pay right, but they're only paying for whatever portion of the bond is left to pay. We've been paying all along, so we've well, kind no. of, you know, helped them to... Or well, whoever, it, whoever is the new That's true. That's builder, true. If it, even if it's but a resident. The, the, the law is very clear. I'm sorry, pay. what? The law is very clear that you only pay for the pay on a bond. Well, <clears throat> they pay to build it, and then as they buy water, they pay money into the district. As and each everyone tap. pays money into the yes. district as we as we right. you know buy water from the system. So that's there is cash flow that not only operates things day to day, but also keeps the system in shape. Okay, so I guess that wasn't quite my question, but the question <coughs> was, if we, um, the district and the citizens who first signed on for the bond have been paying their bond and their property tax bill all these years, and then a new big user of water connects, what happens when those connections start up? They also have to add on to whatever part of the bond is left, right, to be paid off. But does any of the p previous, you know, the fact that we acquired that whole thing, uh, does it go, does the money go back to some of us, either in the reduction of a rate because there's a new big user That's or? Interesting. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Jim asked if he could answer that, and I yeah. said I thought Christine I, should answer I was okay. going to ask Clemens, so whoever wants to answer, it's fine. But my question is basically once they start, you know, we haven't, they, you extend the line and there hasn't been a drop of water yet. I don't know, maybe they don't have a uh, buyer for their project yet. I'm not sure. That's, that's not, right. any, that's not any of our concerns. Exactly. Right now. What we are doing right now is simply a minor right. approval of a subdivision. Exactly. Map. So that, um, and the subdivision has already been approved by all of the planning agencies. I know agencies. that. I read the document. So the question was, what when they start paying in, in because they turn on tap water and we're supplying them water, does how does that affect the district and the past people we that have, have supported have, the bond? We have more customers. Okay, so I, I, I like to just make, okay. I make a ahead. comment that that big wave can't be expected to pay for water use in previous years oh. that they didn't have, oh. so they can't go no. back and pay <laughs> exactly. for the for the water use in the last. 20 years since we bought the district. I'm just saying they are taking a, a resource that we paid to improve over time. So how does that affect the current rate payers? That was my question. I maybe didn't so phrase it right. It um, if, if, if I may, so I understand it's about the bond. Uh, the bond is levied over the district. Mm -hmm. um, 
our service area doesn't comply with the district, so 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 big wages within our service area isn't going to pay the bond. Uh, the bond was taken out for purchase of the water system and for improvements to the water system. That's what we spent $19 million on. But we still have it on our tax bills. How much longer is it to go? We're halfway done. About 10, no, 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 no two thirds. 10, ten years. 10 years. No, uh, and um, my train of thought. Um, That's okay. So I answered it. So ultimately, what I'm trying to say is that in the connection st charge study, meaning Big Wave will pay for each individual <coughs> water connection a very specific amount. What goes into this study, into how we charge this amount, how we calculate this amount, is essentially. Uh, something I'm going to call it now a buy-in. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily a buy-in, but it is. We can consider it here on this level as a buy-in, right? So it's a it's essentially a portion that buys into what is existing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the future rates are going to pay for the water system since that main line becomes part of the water system. Every rate payer pays a portion that goes to capital needs. And um, so the water rates are essentially what are making up the replacement of this main line. So Big Wave will pay for the water main replacement in front of your house, Greg, while as well as any other main, as, as well as you're paying for you know, through your rates for a replacement that is anywhere in the district located. So that money is put in a pool and spent to improve the water system. That's after they start using the water. You in a hundred years yeah. when that line needs to be replaced. Thanks. Yes. yes. That was my question. Okay, let's bring it back to the board. And would you like to speak? No, I don't No, okay, let's bring it back to the board then. I will note that in the letter I got from Greg, some things are out of our consideration. The typos we need to correct, of course. Typos happen. Um, he did ask about adequate fire water storage. I don't think you mean whiskey, right? I think you mean water fire for suppression. fires. Fire suppression. Okay, fire water. Fire water. Um, so, Clemens, would you like to address that? I think we spoke about this. And, and along with another question, I'm sorry, for adequacy of water supplies. Adequacy of water supplies, I think, is a very good topic because uh, I, I wanted to address this actually during the um, manager's report. I attended a meeting of the Association of California Water Agencies, um, Region 5, this is Bay Area um, last week. And um, so this was the big ones. This was East Bay Mud, uh, uh, Valley Water, Contra Costa Camp, uh, Water, um, Alameda Water District. Looking at their water sources and at their water portfolio and what their needs are, determining now that you know we're living in a drought scenario with some rain years versus before it was, you know, we live in a Mediterranean climate with some drought years. I think this is clearly turning around, right? So folks have to be prepared for drought scenarios um, and longer drought scenarios. And how do the water agencies actually look at that and how do they try to cope with this? And um, so they all developed uh, essentially their need strategy um, and and from there they looked at what is the financial impact so come up with a scenario that is doable that is achievable and how do we finance and the first goal that all of these water agencies had was we need to produce 100 percent of our average water demand now bear in mind that means they're looking at trying to produce the amount of water that they need for their customers. That's, that's, their, that's their goal, <laughs> okay? And then they go into 
a drought scenario where they can look at uh, providing 80% of the water to the customers or 70% and from there look at how much does it cost to provide 60%, how much does it cost to provide 70 80% and so on. How do they develop their water uh, sources is a different topic. Um, it's currently not to cycle water even though that's what everybody wants to see. Now, this district here has had to set aside 50% of our capacity for drought contingency. So while others are looking at how can we get to 100% of our water customers' needs, we have 200% of our customers' water needs. I had to set, actually more than that, had to set aside half of that just so that we can supply wa water during droughts. And I think uh, that is, um, I think, probably the most conservative uh, approach in California. Besides that, when it comes to water availability, Big Wave is going to go through what everybody's going to experience here. That means we s provide water on a first come, first serve basis. So with every water, um, um, w water meter application that we get from Big Wave, because Big Wave is going to be built in stages, we will have to make the assessment, do we have enough water to supply this, uh, this next phase, this next building, as we're currently doing for the first phase. So um, there is never a guarantee that we have enough water but um, if we're looking at our supply portfolio, we're, um, I think, pretty safe. We don't plan on running out of water again. But we'll they're repeal. building the pipeline down before drop one goes through it, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And the, one of the conclusion, conclusionary statements in uh, Greg's letter is, I understand the pressure the County and Board of Supervisors is applying to advance big wave but we residents must insist that we do not bear the costs and risks from the project. Um, and I would say that that's certainly the attitude of the board. We um, ask anybody who is doing any new construction in this district, connecting to either our water and or our sewer, to bear their costs and the risks. And we have to do that within the strictures of the law. And so there are particular laws that special districts have to follow in setting our our costs and our rates and it might not, it is not the same as for investor owned utilities and chris can speak to that if she would like to but this board in fact is very aware of that and we so we work with uh, consultants who are very clear and have a have a long history and understanding of the laws and the requirements that a public district must operate under. Uh, comments from the board? I think everybody said it already. So. Okay. Do we have a motion? Uh, I'd like to make a motion. Um, resolution next in order. Resolution of the Montero Water Sanitary District. That would be 1660. Approving the main extension and author authorizing execution of agreement for phase construction and acquisition of subdivision water utility improvements. Um, take the motion. Subject, subject to correction of typos. Second? Typo. Second. Eric, so Jim and Eric, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Abstentions? Hearing none, motion passes. Moving right on to the tracer study project update. Um, Thanks, guys. We'll um, do we do we need a five-minute break? I was going to grab some water. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Tracer study project update, which is an exciting thing, Sid. Yes. Before I hand this to Tanya, get the comfy delve chair. into this in detail. I uh, wanted to thank um, SRT for their help with this tracer study. Um, and they've done a tremendous job in the recent weeks to make sure that we take a look at how we can please the um, state regulator in ensuring that our contact time requirement for the treatment plant is um, granted. So 
kind of if you can just take it from here. Madam President, members of the board, we're very happy to report that we had a successful run and the study has proven what we have been telling the water board for the past 15 years. Your staff and uh, consultants, we knew that this would be the case, but we couldn't prove, and they don't take a word for it. So they, um, so the choice was, as, as you probably recall, to do the tracer study, which was uh, a huge expense, but uh, versus a 10 times plus more expense of building a new tank, is what the water board wanted, the division of drinking water. Um, we have been very successful, but I also would like to say that um, the study is under budget right now uh, due to a huge input and participation of the district staff who took on a lot of work uh, for which you didn't have to pay for so, um, to others. And we were able to save money that way and um, it was much more um, efficient. Now, there were several hiccups in the way. <laughs> Uh, we're dealing with a chemical um, that um, <coughs> basically can dissolve the body, person, body. Uh, it was very frightening, the, the acid that we were dealing with, the tracer. Um, but we were able to... <laughs> now you tell me right after I got a drink of water. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Rick. No, no, <laughs> it um, was nice knowing everybody. <laughs> <laughs> that was the coffee. Um, <laughs> it's fluoride, um, but in its uh, undiluted form, it's quite a formidable acid. Um, however, the good news is um, the, the study uh, has proven that not only the district is, uh, what, what all, the, all the things your staff has told you before for 15 years have been telling you, um, our work are correct, and the general manager knew this. We all intuitively knew it, we just needed the proof. So we now have the proof that the district's um, disinfection system is working correctly, and there's enough detention time, which is called contact time, CT, uh, sufficient to disinfect the water and that groundwater mixing with the surface water tr uh, treated at the Alta Vista treatment plant does not affect that uh, process. And so we will be sending you a, a report to the state with a huge hope that they will leave us in, well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we <laughs> hear you, so we hear you. Um, and the district is in full compliance uh, with the surface water treatment rule and uh, everything is in accordance to the US EPA guidance manual and all the all the regulations are thoroughly met. So uh, we we in the in the board agenda we have included some photographs <laughs> um, of the studying process and again we want to thank you thank the district staff for doing all this work and supporting the study and i um, very happy to report the good results. And I would be happy to answer any questions, but there will be a more detailed report uh, forthcoming as well. Thank you. Okay, are we done with that? Yes. Okay, moving right along to the progress report for the Wagner Well Rehabilitation and Water Main Replacement Project. Exciting okay. stuff. I'm just going to hand it right back to you, Tanya. Um, rep reporting about the project that's essentially the um, Wagner Well Improvement Project, but there is also uh, improvements that are made at the Drake Well site as well. So um, this project uh, has been in the Capital Improvements Program for now a few years, and now it reached that the point where it's done for implementation. It was a future project and then it came to be a present project. Um, Drake and Wagner are good workhorses for the district. They're good producing wells. Um, back in the day, um, before the district took over, uh, there was some um, um, uh, an MTB um, contamination, hydrocarbon contamination coming from the farm and um, a um, GAC filters were installed. 
We were and able, GAC for oh, the sorry, audiences. Oh, sorry, granulated activated, granular activated carbon filters were installed um, that we were able to disconnect because of that contamination was no longer a threat. Uh, working together with the county, this was at the early stages of the district taking over in 2005. Um, so these vessels were sitting there idle, doing nothing, and uh, this project will remove them uh, for good. Um, but most importantly, rehabilitate both uh, Drake and Wagner's uh, site wells, and uh, replace the main um, that's interconnect some, which will improve the distribution system quite substantially, and uh, fence and gates and things like that, access security, um, and demolish a dilapidated shade and the old gen generator. The project is slated to be complete in October of this year. So moving on schedule. Good. Thank you. And review and possible action concerning district Request. minutes review per um, request. Uh, thank you, Catherine. Uh, so this was an item that um, actually was prompted by a request by Lou. Thank you, Lou. Um, and ultimately, uh, what I can say is that we are, uh, so our minutes are prepared by Tracy, our district clerk, clerk the reviewed by me and approved by the Montero board. Um, uh, Tracy attended the CSDA board secretary conference that um, has a focus on the preparation of board minutes. Um, so we do this with all our clerks, and as soon as Tracy came on board, she participated on this, uh, in this. Um, and um, so we are always recording any action taken during the meeting. So at minimum, we're taking action minutes. However, we actually um, have historically capture conversations that lead up to board decisions and um, we've actually received these requests uh, repeatedly from board members to expand the minutes to capture the conversation leading up to the decision so um, I, I think the discussion minutes is really our standard minute format uh, sometimes we have received requests either from the board or more so from actually legal counsel for what's called verbatim minutes, where now everything word by word is captured so that there is a very thorough understanding of what happened at that meeting at that certain item. So we have applied these um, different forms at uh, you know discretion um, but ma we're mainly focusing on discussion minutes to allow a better understanding of you know, how those decisions were made. Um, with that, I hand it to the board for discussion and direction. Rick. I mean, if you would, that sounds like a lot of work to put every word into the minutes. Um, can we say that since the entire meeting is videotaped, and those are records are available also that in the incidences where somebody either the board or the public wants to know word for word what happened it seems like the video can handle that so i think we want to we want to point out that the minutes are an official document mm -hmm. while you know a uh, recording yeah that the captures of course everything sure. most of everything except yeah, but I, but I don't think that verbatim is a requirement. No, and, and, I've and I want to point out again, we don't have verbatim mm -hmm. as a requirement. Yes. Here we have sometimes received a request from legal counsel or from board members mm -hmm. to capture a specific item verbatim. What we generally do here is discussion minutes, where a discussion is summarized. Um, I mean, that, that compares to action minutes that doesn't capture any of the discussion, but simply records the action taken. Right, which is which really down the line doesn't give any history for people right. who. And I mean, I've been places where that's they've taken that minimal approach. It's 
there was a vote at the end. The vote was three to two. But, but was there a video? That's the whole minutes. Was there a video for those? As um, I back so, I mean, well, so I, I'm in favor of our current. But when process. I got on the board, I uh, read a lot of the early minutes. And you wouldn't know anything about how it happened because we <laughs> had the, you had the recording of the vote and that was it. And there was no video back, back in the day. And, and you believe, have to rely on video our, to exist. Our need for, uh, for, for beta minutes might be uh, noted if we're in a discussion where we believe that might be uh, important to have. I think it's something we can ask for at the time. Um, I think some discussion minutes are always helpful because it, it helps anyone to quickly go through and get the sense of okay, what was happening, how they arrive at this conclusion. I think that's really good for the record, that distillation of it. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would be very inclined to um, just leave uh, verbatim minutes for a, an as needed kind of thing, which we haven't needed in a while. Like a special request or something. Yeah. That's fine. Um, and yes. I, I, would, I would suggest too, um, <coughs> videos go up on, on the net. We can get automated machine learning generated transcripts, which are not bad, especially when, you know, you know in conjunction with the video. So if there's some garble, you can go try to figure it out. I, I think that for people who want to do textual searches and such, that's not a bad starting point. And I would have killed to have that in the early, you know, early in my career here. Um, but now I can go get some of that on my own without burdening staff and, and you know, time and expense. So I'm very much kind of in the middle on, you know, if we could have some discussion minutes, I think it'd be great. But I don't want to see for a few minutes. I, I think action minutes are fine with the technology that's available to us and like you said with the uh, learning you can pretty much use that as a uh, means to get to any uh, more detailed information. I think t in today's world that uh, I understand what was needed prior to that so I asked Rick you know on your example is if you didn't have anything to back up to then you know then that's not a very good minutes process right but we have a very good backup process that's uh, very attainable and my guess is, is that if you have verbatim you probably have to end up going back to Tracy does end up going back to the video to watch it to determine what that verbatim was so I think it's probably already in practice so my suggestion is is that we or I would pr support more of an action type of minutes with uh, uh, recordings as a backup for any additional requests okay. Jim I agree with Eric I disagree um, we had a very angry person, former board member, standing here telling us we lack transparency. And um, it's if I have some decent, not action minutes, but, but some contextual kinds of minutes to send people to, somebody who is, is very busy is not going to have time to go to through all these meetings and watch them and try and search out the text and that kind of thing. So I, I like to see a um, easier to find and, su and, and give people a sense of what the board was doing and why. I spent a whole lot of years doing a whole lot of records driving, diving and um, through minutes. The other issue is that um, it's tough to maintain all of this stuff and to maintain access to all of to maintain access to all of this stuff, and um, it's it. So my concern is that if we if we we need to make it easy for transparency. So I I like have not just action minutes, but I like having some contextual. So discussion. Discussion minutes, exactly. I, I want to point out one more time that you know the verbatim minutes are rare exceptions that you know we as needed really, as needed, and we haven't really seen those in, in the past. So we stick to usually to discussion minutes. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if we're using the wrong words or in the wrong context. I thought we were saying is what we wanted was discussion minutes. And what we didn't want was 100% or beta minutes. Right. I wasn't suggesting that we go back to just action, you know, here's the vote. 
Okay. I'm, I'm fully in support of what we're doing right now. My, my so guess, guess we is call we've that got discussion minutes. And that's fine. We've, we've got I a just relative don't want to go consensus. to verbatim. We should save some work. Yeah, keep some context in the, in the minutes. Yeah. Exactly. It's really helpful. It's it's great to be able to like read the minutes and have a pretty good idea of what happened in the meeting. That's really nice. And then if if people have more interest, they can dive into the, the video. But that's it. Action minute or if just simple action minutes. Recording the the, the, the line vote. item and the vote. Is like, yeah. I understand. Yeah, I, okay. I will add that Leonard Warren, bless his heart, um, went through all of the minutes on the founding of SAM, and um, those were those were um, uh, fairly complete minutes, and they did add a lot to discussions 20 and 25 years later. So it it it, it is something that occasionally people do reference. Uh, review and possible action concerning wastewater management specialist proposal for to sewer authority mid coast side. And uh, I asked to have this on, and I'm looking for a. This is not an action vote, but I'm looking for a straw poll to give advice to the SAM board members and alternates. And you also asked to address maybe desired attributes in a new SAM manager. Yes, and um, I got a note from Keishin today that, um, the, that the SAM board members will be able to interview the final two candidates for recruiting companies the to re engagements. Yeah. The agencies, to, right? For the agencies to find and, and choose one to find the a new general manager for Sam. So, um, discussion from the audience? Hearing none, bring it back to the board. Well, I guess the first point I'll make is that from, from uh, attributes of the Sam manager, you want somebody that's got a pretty well-rounded background. Um, not just an engineer. Not, no. I, in fact, I highly recommend that it's not an engineer. Um, that's the purpose of hiring an engineer. You rely on them and their expertise. You're not supposed to be, as a, as a manager in my mind, you're not the expert, but you have the wherewithal to ask the questions. Um, and I think that's key in, in uh, keeping an organization moving towards the right goals. So I'd rather see that kind of uh, attribute than I would seeing somebody that's an operator or an engineer as their primary, because typically they miss out on a lot of things that uh, uh, I think are necessary at that level. And that includes staff uh, uh, management as well as finances and understanding a lot of the uh, other items that come with managing the entire organization. So I hear you saying a well-rounded background, not necessarily an engineer or an operator with strength, strength, strengths in finance and um, HR. Yep. Well, uh, I left for a minute. What are we talking about? What are we asking? We are talking about review and possible action concerning wastewater management specialist proposal to sewer authority mid coast side and so that I'm asking for a straw poll on whether we should go forward with this contract and um, also I'm asking for um, comments on attributes of um, the incoming of a new general manager okay. um, because the um, uh, we're going to be interviewing people, talking to people, and we have a whole lot of experience with Sam on this board, and um, so it would be useful for the Sam board members and or alternates to know what the board discusses, desires. Uh, yeah, on, on the wastewater management specialist part of that, um, everybody in the world knows that we're in a lawsuit with Half Moon Bay. Uh, with tons of expenses and as that settles then maybe we're going to have a better idea of, of how much first of all how much money we have and second of all it would seem to me it would also depend on who we get in as a general manager um, okay. many of these functions would could be could be taken by a general manager 
not necessarily all of them. And since we're perennial, I'm always on the edge of not quite having enough people all the time there. Um, there could be some functions for uh, WMS here, even if we do get a, a general manager. So I think getting the general manager going is, is the highly critical thing and then build around whoever the manager is what functions the waste waste management group can do or you know because one person i don't think can do everything okay um and strength and and what about the um attributes characteristics for a new gm you're going to be doing you're going to be one of the people who's probably interviewing mm -hmm. but it would be nice to let the rest of the board know what you're looking for um, I, I like the idea that we've discussed, you know, several times, I think, is I'm, I'm personally not looking for the world's best engineer. Um, our original idea in the last round was that most of the highly technical information could cooperatively be gathered from the managers as a consultant group to the general manager. I. I think that's where our engineering power is going to be in the staff and the general and our managers. And I think it's best for the general manager to pick up all the other stuff that isn't specifically engineering. You know, I don't expect a licensed operator or anything like that from the general manager. But as Eric said, you know, more of the financial HR general management skills being able to work in a joint powers, I would say that's like mandatory prior history of working in tough groups like that. And good. I think we are a good tough challenge for somebody. That's an understatement. Mm -hmm. Greg, I see, I, I see, why don't you come up and speak let now? Me, let me, uh, let well, me, let's uh, listen to uh, Greg and then going, you can. You're going through the board? I, I wanted, yes, but I wanted, I, I read Greg's note and I thought he, I think I know what he's going to be saying. Well, but I think I'm not going to say everything I told you in confidence, but uh, I want to make you aware that I did speak to national engineering consultants and wastewater professionals before this guy spoke last time, and I checked out his background. He's very qualified. But the consensus of all the people I spoke to was, you hire the GM first, which is what Rick is saying. You don't spend any money on this guy until the GM is present at the creation to decide whether or not he wants to help and to make sure that he's going to agree with what gets done. I would also point out, without telling the whole story, that I've had some of these people try to help me find a GM for Sam. And you got a problem. People know what's going on at Sam. There aren't, it's going to be real hard to find somebody. So get those recruiting firms going because you got a real problem getting somebody to take that same job. All right, that's all I'll say. Jim. Oh, are we going through the board? We're, we're not going through the board. Am I the last one? No, no. no. Oh, okay, all right. We still got a couple. Okay, so uh, I, I, uh, as far as the general manager, I, I agree with Rick and Eric that we need to have, with, with, the, with the situation here in the coast side, we need to have a good manager, a good um, a, a person who is a foremost a good manager um, as opposed to an engineer. So I think that's the first requirement for the general manager is to be able to handle handle people, handle the, the J, handle the uh, agencies and, uh, and and be a good problem solver with, uh, with the, the, the situation we have. Um, as far as the, uh, the uh, management, as far as this, the district consultant, I, I think that um, I, I kind of, um, I kind of, I think I tend to disagree with Greg. I think that he, um, he, he was able to discuss the fact that if he was brought on board, he would help out. He would be, he'd participate in, in, um, in helping us get a general manager. Um, he, uh, I, I think, it, I think that that. I, I feel just the opposite. It might be a good idea to have, uh, the if the, if taking a straw poll, uh, in general, I'm for this, I'm for this um, uh, hiring him and this, this, uh, this um, procedure. And I think it, 
I think it would be better to have him come on board first and have him help us find the, a proper general manager and then work with that new manager initially to, uh, to, uh, to uh, help him out and, and how to uh, work with this district. So I think it would be better to have him come first. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Scott? So I'll start with that point. I think that um, it's, it's, no, it's no mystery that uh, what Sam's been going through has been uh, very much in the public. And it's something that we've discussed amongst ourselves uh, when I was sitting on the Sam board and with my colleagues here. Um, and for that reason, I think having the consultant there to work with us is one of those things that we can do to um, help already start to address some of the issues that have been at play in um, what makes it a difficult environment. And knowing that we're making that commitment and uh, doing some things to uh, settle things down and uh, start working constructively together is a good, it's part of the pitch of, okay, there's some hope that coming in here uh, is going to make some sense. It's not something where it's just completely blown up, we're actually doing what we can, take the pieces and put them back in place. And uh, if if I were looking at, at this, I would say, hmm, these guys are starting to get their house in order. Uh, maybe, maybe it's okay to come back in. Maybe now, you know, things have, uh, when, when uh, people or organizations uh, need to do something to get their act together, sometimes it's okay to have a crisis to um, get to where you realize, you know, we're going to have to do some serious work on this. First, and you have to admit you have a problem. <laughs> so, you know, we've, we've invested heavily of our own, especially of our own selves, in trying to hold the agency together and try to keep it functioning. Uh, I welcome the uh, the extra help, and I think it will be helpful in landing a good manager. Um, as far as what I'd like to see our crew to do, our team do on um, trying to land a manager, uh, I think we need to be diligent about um, uh, really getting to know who these people are, taking a, a first-hand look at their work. Um, we've, uh, we've dealt with the hiring many managers, and uh, one of the things that I, I wish we had more consistently done is take a look at examples of their budgets, of the minutes, uh, and maybe observed uh, them in a difficult board meeting. And, you know, I'd like to say, you know, show me a board meeting, uh, show me a video of a board meeting where it was difficult and uh, something that's representative of the way you work in trying to navigate those difficult waters. I think these are practical, tangible steps that we can take that might inform us about who these people are. Thank you. I think, um, as usual, I, I, I agree with you. And I particularly think, Scott, that wastewater management is already making a difference. We approved a $50,000 check for him at the last SAM board meeting. On the way in, I saw a woman working on piles of paper in front of her. And so uh, being me, I said, hi, who are you? I'm Catherine, I'm on the board. And she said, oh, well, I'm with wastewater management and I'm helping with the audit, which is something we have desperately needed is, is to get assistance in to help the staff. So I believe that um, wastewater management is already proving its value to Sam and particularly to um, the member agencies and to um, um, the staff at SAM as well. Uh, and we only have two and a half months left in which Keishan can continue to perform as a manager, so we are on a very short timeline for so finding somebody. And I agree, I think having a manager, as you said, Jim, who has HR and financial skills, um, we already have a really good engineer in Keishan, we have really good staff people, and um, we need a good problem solver, so somebody who can work with wastewater <laughs> management and with the general ma with our agency manager, so we can work out this collection systems 
differences and um, all of these other differences. But in fact, and I'll be done in a second, Rick, um, having, having a new general manager come in and get himself acclimated, um, we can't be asking that person to come and manage a, plant, a brand new plant and get solving problems all at the same time and having an outside person mm -hmm. to present options is good. My biggest concern about wastewater management systems, I said it last week and I will say it again, is it's a heck of a lot of money. And I don't think that this district should, I, I, I think what we have to do is find out from the other member agencies if they're going to support this or not. And, and not only support it financially, but support it what changes are suggested structurally and also the healing of SAM, getting the staff that is needed. We had a staffing report years ago. Um, it was ignored. We paid for all kinds of studies that have been ignored. Uh, we need to get moving forward on taking those studies seriously and um, looking at them from a point of view of a public agency not necessarily a private agency, an investor-owned utility, which has, has um, oftentimes they have a um, attitude of, of the uh, cost plus, which for the public means that you run something into the ground, then you get to replace it and make, oh, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 percent on top of it. Whereas if you've just been maintaining it, you um, wouldn't get that kind of profit. So we need to be looking at it from a public agency point of view. Rick. I just want to piggyback on Scott's idea that I, I shame to say I never even thought of before. Um, every general manager who came in and interviewed said, I've just spent the last three weeks, weeks looking at the last seven months of your board meetings <laughs> and blah, 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 blah. But we never, per Scott, said, well, why don't we go look at their at their board meetings and see how they perform? Really, in fact, since Scott doesn't go to the meetings, I'm on Sam. I mean, I claim that's my idea because he'll never know. That's right. Well, I I I, 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 <laughs> I would suggest then that when it when it comes to this, as part of the resume of final candidates, we ask for examples of budgets yeah. and minutes and any other kind of documentation that we want to see. Yeah, I the like work just product. watching their board meetings to see how they, yep. how that person performed. That's excellent. Okay. I'm glad I thought of it. You, you, <laughs> I'm glad I thought of it. <laughs> we have, you know, I'm, we have such a brilliant board. Report, Sewer Authority Mid-Coast Side. Um, it was a short meeting. Um, we was very happy for some reason, and uh, so we got out by 8 o'clock. Everything was approved, and, and even pretty much without discussion, except for, grazing. Come on, that was a oh, well, that was a big deal, was uh, Sam hired a goat herdsman and her, her herdswoman, herdsperson, to come in and graze the Sam uh, property there in the wetland so it would clear it off, and that was a big deal. If you drive by and look at this property, you can see where the goat has been. Which a great property? Job. Where is it located? Uh, at the, if you're going into Sam, it's on the right-hand side. Um, and so we did approve the $50,000 check. Otherwise, it was it was a pretty routine meeting. Midcoast Community Council was last night. Uh, we talked about combustible, compostable food waste. I noticed on next door, one of the proponents. Combustible is the worst. One of the proponents <laughs> has set up a Facebook page. So if people are interested in being, uh, in joining this and getting a full discussion of this, um, I think you should go to next door and look up uh, the um, uh, comments and who you can join so there can be a full discussion. Um, the other item was the highway crossing um, and uh, various highway issues. Mm -hmm. Somehow in the middle of the night a, uh, cross, uh, a highway crossing came up and so up they, they were talking, uh, Midcoast Council talked about it. Seton Hospital is for sale and they were raising concerns about that and they also had the wildlife 
uh, conservation public access grant for Montero State Beach that they were discussing. So you can you can see those on for our earlier discussion. You can see those on the um, Pacifica TV. Is the council going to be talking to Caltrans about the quality of the crosswalk that's in place? You know, you'll have to watch that. I left at, before that item so came I, up drove over it tonight and uh, that is the sketchiest looking painted crosswalk I have ever seen. And it's not appropriate for road <coughs> speed. It's not wide enough. It it's doesn't slim. it doesn't meet the Caltrans standards. Like, like crosswalk. I mean like that is the weirdest looking and there is not there. adequate notice. CSDA report. Rick. Uh, CSDA doesn't happen until the end of October. LAFCO is next week, finally, so in a while I'll actually have some reports for those. Okay, attorney's report. No Nothing. report. Uh, director's reports. Hearing none, general manager's report. Uh, nothing further to the written report. Okay. Uh, future agendas. You have a speaker slip on the general manager's report. Oh, I do. Thank you. Okay, so. Sorry to keep you here. It's really quick. This is the, the item that Clemens spoke to before uh, about we're saying that we had 50% of our capacity reserve. You know, I spent more time going through table ES6 in the 2017 master plan to try and understand our storage and capacity and its allocation. And I swear what I see is two days of uh, average daily use, two hours of fire storage, and 25% of a maximum daily use. Okay, and that's our allocation. And I know we have a million four hundred and two thousand, but if we could take it offline, if somebody would hand me the table that shows me how we've reserved half of the the capacity for fire, I'd I'd love to see it because so I keep seeing the two hundred forty thousand not going up. So, Greg, you're looking at storage and are talking capacity, two different things. So you're including a flow estimate. So storage is what we have in the tanks. Right. Capacity is what can the wells produce? Is How there, fast can they fill the storage? Is there another document then that explains the statistics that you're quoting? Public Works Plan Amendment 2013. Okay, I'll look for it. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. I think it's worth pointing out that these documents are available to everyone. Not just Greg. <laughs> 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 Greg's not the only one who's looked at. There's a bunch of people out there who've looked at. I said, public. But uh, uh, no other people have, and they're actually very interesting documents. It's uh, you know there are a lot of people with questions like Greg has, and some of it's pretty good reading. I mean, so there's some pretty good charts and pictures too. Okay, let's uh, future agendas. We have collections contract. Status update. Um, do we have any other suggestions? Hearing none, let's recess and reconvene in closed session. Just recess.